um, status orchard one nothing absolutely nothing no PRs I think that was an issue no commits Benedict must be on vacation we'll see orchard call more things Seven days dev branch is the is not the left one. The dev branch is the purple one, which is the left one here. Okay. So here if we go back in time did we see that fixed attached media field button DBT? I think so. No we didn't six days ago. Fixed attached media field add button VBT. So an issue fixed CSS JavaScript um PRs I need to look at that this one is interesting and I haven't merged it yet and 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 maybe I should this one is about being able to use the title part to define a pattern like for auto route part but a pattern that would be used to create um, a title automatically. So instead of being able to type a title, a display text for a content item, you could configure a title part to generate a title based on field values, custom text. So this is the ID. Um, because sometimes you just want an automatic title based on the field, for instance. And you don't want users to be able to edit it. And also sometimes you might want um, items that are not editable to have a display text like automatically generated content items from a workflow. Um, so that we will merge soon. Cypress test I should also we will merge it soon because it's just better than uh, Puppeteer. Uh, I mean templates I will show it to you. And I think last week I missed some branches that were interesting. Nope, and look like um, and and I was on this one. Then dev branch fix blob double encoding issues. Um, this one is about not encoding the, the URLs automatically. Apparently, we were using um, a path string dot to string instead of getting the dot value, and the to string will encode stuff, which will itself be encoded again. And then we have to decode it, and that's the trick. If at some point we have to decode something that is like the URL or the path, then then we must have encoded it too much before. And that was the, the issue. So thank you, Dean, for fixing it. Eliminate the shapes, duplicate on editors. Yes, so this one, there could be a conflict, like if some shapes were starting with the same file name, they could appear as different editors for fields. Uh, so it has been fixed. And by the way, um, thinking now, this is for fields, but we have the same behavior for parts. So maybe we should fix it also for parts, the fix being easy. It was funny, I, I was enjoying the discussion because I wrote this code and um, I knew how it works and why it was using an end width and everything, and everyone was trying to understand the code which means we should have some comments explaining what it's doing. I forgot to make them. But in the end, yeah, the fix was to change the end the width with the equals. And also, yeah, so... And there is a fix to the fix to commit after because I messed up when I copy-pasted. That's okay. But we need to fix it in parts also. I forgot about that. Um, can someone create an issue? I don't want to, be, like... Yeah, create an issue to say fix the part editor settings because they have the same code. I copy pasted it for the parts. 
or maybe Jean Thierry copy pasted it for the parts when he did that also. I don't remember. Um, validate stereotypes just to prevent stereotypes from having non alphanumeric num values, chars, um, because they are used for file template names generation and other things. And also, I, th I assume the, the initial idea was that people were assuming that they could provide multiple stereotypes by passing a, a comma, but no, you can't. Fixing display option discovery. Yeah, this is the issue I mentioned. Mat copy paste. To replace gulp CSS stand by gulp minifier. Um, the goal being to remove some security warnings, I think. Fixing display option discovery again. Okay, well, that's the fix to the fix. Um, experimenting with that is okay. This is a different branch, which is the liquid filter. So I don't remember for what. And then jumping here, fixing link to documentation. Yes, some people were uh, getting to the latest. Well, I think first it's interesting because I clicked on a link and I couldn't find the guides and I'm like, yeah, why did I get to latest? It should be dev. So it was the readme badge to the link to the documentation that was wrong. And then right after someone said, hey, I can't find that because I'm on the latest branch under the dev branch. And, and we asked, where did you get this link? And it just had an old bookmark. Um, change the route cache tag to slug, an old issue to fix because this thing, tag cache dot remove tag, tag async, very not well known uh, feature, but we have uh, some caching features with shapes and non shapes. And you can tag a cached entry. And some things in the system can. Um, clear the cache based on tags. So in this case, whenever a content item with an auto route part is changed, it will try to remove any tagged item with the slug, colon, and the path. Okay, so when you insert something in your HTML and you say, oh, I'm dependent on slug whatever, then this element will be removed automatically if this slug has changed. So when you're rendering a content item and you know that, or a list of things and you know it has an auto route with this value, you can say, well, whenever this content item with this value changes, remove me. And there is the same thing for a content item ID, if you have the content item ID. Just different ways to do that. Um, good. Fix typo in Lucid Admin reset it to reset. So documentation, well, translation strings. Add Babel to package JSON and GulpJS pipeline. So I assume the goal being to render ES5 scripts instead of ES6 and to accept more browsers. Um, better defaults to search controller merged. S yeah, many people have asked, how do I do my search? And we have a controller called search controller that already works. It just needed some tweaks, so you had to configure it correctly uh, due to the latest um, full text property. Maybe I will show how it works actually with the full search. 
Um, so now I change just some defaults and some error messages so that it's obvious when the search works and doesn't work for what reason search is not configured, search is not configured. But in the log you will have like no listing settings was defined or the search index doesn't exist. And I change the default for the search fields to be not empty but to be full text field, which is the new um, index uh, colon we create that will contain the full text and that is configurable and that's usually what you want in the search feature and I will also change the, the settings page to use this value for people who want to update that. So if you have an existing installation you will have to sell it again and save it to get this field as a default search field for the search controller. Uh, which does standard search engine for content items um, in any website. And that's what usually people want. And we don't need um, the other PR from Jasmine so far to, to get that. He already made the full text PR. Um, that's it. Then this thing preview work in progress. I pushed it because Shantiri wanted to help me on that. I was stuck on something. I might explain what it does. Uh, is working on replacing path string usage to, to string dot, to the dot value to prevent encoding, unnecessary encoding. But at some point, sometimes it might be more complex than anything, so we'll see how it goes with the different changes. Still working on that. Um, and then this is a filter. I saw some documentation. shape dump uh, filter to dump a shape properties alternates and everything when you debug which maybe should be um, shape tracing tools it was one of the um, most favorited modules in Orchard 1 and it got even a, a redevelopment from uh, um, Chris um, Bain. Who knows about the shape diagnostic tools, the shape tracing feature in Osho 1? Antoine knows. And the rest, I have no idea who knows. Shape tracing. Okay, so then you know about it, but you still did shape dump. Yeah, the idea would be that it would be like uh, F12 tools, like the, the debug tools in Chrome for shapes. So you will see all the shapes that have been rendered and all the alternates and the source code for alternates. Super useful. But now we tend to make shapes easier to template, so might not need that. So I'll use the properties on the UI is easier. We need the same thing with JSON dump. Um, a way, so what you did here, uh, I'm not sure about, I think I, I saw some documentation, but I can't find it. Or maybe it's on the PR. Yeah, so you are exporting the JSON content of the shape. I don't know how it looks like in the output. Uh, I hope it looks like JSON and not just a few lines of JSON without um, new lines. Uh, we need the same thing for the content of a content item that will render it with a nice JSON output um, that you can expand and and see not just as a one line of JSON that contains everything and you can't read the JSON but a formatted JSON even if it has to inject some local script in the, the thing that it renders that would be so nice. um, the same thing for shapes but for content so maybe reuse the same kind of JSON display helper to get foldable expandable uh, JSON nodes 
on the output directly. Would be nice. Um, so that's it for the changes. Then demos. Who has some demos? Then I will start with the demos. And I will start with what I was working on yesterday. Because it's on my this is not the toolbar I want. I never know how to show this. Ah. Um, so, I was working on the preview branch. So, the idea of that branch is that today when we do a preview, um, it's using the content item controller, the one that renders the shape content item, the, sh the content shape, and so you can have your own custom template and it will render that. Okay, and how it works is that when I this one, this one, so when you click on the preview button, there is a new window that opens. And this new window will call into a custom preview controller. This preview controller is in the preview module, this one. And what it does is, when it gets called on a post from the second window, it gets the content item which is inside the form post and tries to update the result of the post like it was a publish action or a save action on the formula on, on the form and then we get in the end a content item that is new like if we were about to save the content item form and from this content item we just call build display and render it using a view and this view we say view model and this thing just does display thing the shape so this view contains the shape rendered in the current layout of the front end. Okay. Here. Blog. Preview. That's it, you see, content preview, preview index. That's the index page here that returns a frame which itself will invoke render. Okay, every time there is, so this frame, every time there is a keystroke in this thing, will call again the render method to render the frame inside. And you see it doesn't work because I broke it. Um, because what I'm trying to do is find a way to customize what, how to render the page here. Because it, this thing works well when we are using the um, content shapes, where we are in a full CMS mode. But when we are in the decouple mode, to render anything, it's not based on the content shape. It's based on the devs own view, the dev's own template and routing and controller action or razor pages. So here, maybe the developer, well, I assume, made something to render a blog post. And it might be slash my blog, slash date, slash the name of the blog post or an ID or whatever route, but we don't know. Only the developer knows that because developer made, um, made a view that um, that defines the, or resource page that defines the, the route. So what I did is a new part called the preview part that contains nothing but has settings. So when you will add a preview part to a blog post, you will go to settings and define the pattern for the route 
to display this blog post. So the developer makes their own view and then they can configure this content type to say that for the preview you should use my route that will display my blog post. Okay? And then when we click preview, the preview page instead of going to this well, it will still go to the index page that we call the render, but the idea is to intercept the render to invoke the, the URL that will actually render the blog post from the dev's perspective, instead of trying to render the blog post using the content shape, because the content shape in this case won't have any customization. It might just render something like the type and, and the title of the of the thing. That's it. Um, so that's what I was working on and I hit some difficulties and Jean Thierry is trying to help me with that. But in the end this should work. We should be able to have preview even in decouple mode. And that was the feedback I got mostly from people who tried the decouple mode. They could not use the um, the preview which is kind of sad. It's not a blocker, but it's kind of sad. And also the flow part. If you don't have a good preview with the flow part, then the flow part is kind of useless because you don't see what you are doing. So I'm trying to do that. Um, that will work. Eventually it will work. I, I made some progress. Um, just need to be able to run. And the progress is that how it works is we have a middleware that will intercept the fact that you're trying to call the render method but the content item you just posted has a preview part so we need to be able to update it from a middleware and not from a controller that's the, the issue using a model binding um, but before we are in an MVC view Unless I have some other ideas, um, and here you see. Oh, and the trick, the trick is huge actually. The trick is huge because let me show you. Let's say you have. You will see the the issue here. So this is what I used. No, this is not what I used. So imagine you have a razor page. A razor page which look like this. You want blog post slash id. So you create a new razor page and you say um, when someone goes to blog post slash an id you want to load the blog post. So what you will do is var blog post equals orchard dot get content item by id and you will say something like id because you will bind this to a form property id. And you have that, okay? Um, and then you have the blog post and you can say at blog post dot display text you render the blog post as you want. Okay, super easy. And that's how you will build the thing. And now this is this route that you will configure also in the pattern in liquid and um, the middleware will invoke this page. But this thing goes from the database to get the, the content. And what you don't want to do is look for any um, ambient content item that could be loaded by the middleware. You want to still call get content item by ID or anything that goes from standard content manager. And how we do that is because we have the notion of a content manager session, which is an identity map, sort of a cache, a local cache for each request of all the content items that is used by the content manager itself. So when you get a content item, the content manager will store it in this manager session. And the next time you call it, it won't load it from database. It will just say, I already have it. It's there. So what we do, we use the same service, but to store a content item, the one that we uh, create it dynamically from the for post and we store it there so that when we invoke your preview URL and what is VS code? Did appear. Oh I opened it in the in the client. So when you invoke your 
preview your when we invoke your preview URL and you call the database, actually you will get the one from memory. And there will be no database hit. It will be the one that has been created live. So that's also why we we, we need custom pictures for, for for this thing. So that you don't have to care about it in your views. It's if it's coming from a database or coming from a fake content item ID we content item we created on the fly. So that should be super useful. Um, um, so that's it for this thing that I've been working on. And, 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 I wanted to show you something else. The, where is that? Admin templates. There's a PR. When I tried it, Admin templates executing. It's like templates, but for the admin. So let's see how it works. So we have front end themes and a back end theme, the admin. And we can select oh doesn't build. So front-end themes and admin themes and when you want to customize the admin theme right now there is no other way than um, creating a new theme and having this theme as a base one and selecting it in selecting your own admin theme in the in the dashboard. So what I did is the same as a templates module but a new feature inside that will let you create um, templates, shape templates, from the admin itself, for the admin. So we already have that for the front end, but I made the same thing for the admin in a different uh, window so we don't mess up with a different permission. So you can give people permission to write templates for the admin or for the front end. Uh, because you might break the admin template with that. And I assume this way we well, most devs won't have to create a custom admin theme because usually it's just to change, I don't know, uh, a summary for a widget or, well, not for a widget, but a summary for a blog post, for instance, or the detailed template for a widget, a specific widget because you want it to look different or you want to hide something like you want to hide the title part editor in, the, in a way or to make it different. So this way you can do that. So if I go to configuration, features, templates, you see there is templates and there is admin templates, which is already enabled on this uh, setup. So if I go to templates, this is the templates, and there should be an admin templates. There is page. And you see here I have content summary admin blog post. So the summary admin for the blog post which contains foo. It works. And if I go to the blog, foo. Okay. So now you can customize what's in this thing. Uh, might not be super good because you're writing everything. Ideally, the summary admin should reuse all the zones and just replace one of the zones because like everything, um, it's based on zones.
So we, I assume that if I rename one, it will create a new one. No, it's okay. So but it used to be an old bug. So you see, this is how it looks like. And the default template for a summary admin has multiple zones already, like maybe the content, maybe the metadata, the actions. So usually when you will create, want to redefine something, you will copy the same zone so that you are not breaking everything. You might just be able to add something else. Okay, that's the idea. Or to change the button, like to hide the button, or to to change the style of something, or to make to change the background. But you have to keep the organization so that other modules who want to inject something in the summary admin can still do that. By creating my own template, I didn't render any section, which means I broke other modules from being able to inject stuff. But that you, you get the idea. You can change the summaries. You can change in the editors uh, how the editors look like. Um, so everything is available now, now from the admin, if there is anything you want to do. That might also allow us to create... Um, oh, we don't have a link to the dashboard, actually. Interesting. So when we have a way to edit this page, maybe we want we will want to be able to create custom widgets that we want to place on that and define their own styles or their own templates for that, if we have the admin templates. Uh, if necessary, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so that's it. And did I have something else? The search, I will show the search and I have to switch branches again. Just because not everyone knows about this feature. So I will just go to dev branch. Did I miss anything? The search feature, which is part of the Lucene module, which might not be super clever. Maybe it could have its own module. Because there is a custom controller, and it doesn't care about what is indexing anything. So, if tomorrow we have Elasticsearch, we need to change that. So by default, when you have the Lucene module enabled, there is a search controller. And it's super ugly in the I noticed that. We didn't create, we didn't customize the search page for the, the block theme, but it's there. Okay, And if you type something, it works because it's on this branch. And uh, But it will also work on an existing RC deployment because what you need to do is go in configuration settings search which is already there you already have a way to select which index you want to be able to search and the default search fields which are the fields in which we will look for the content you type and before there was nothing so the search will not work and it will say the search is not configured on the front end you will not you will not see that but on the back end um, you will we will log something. But so now what I did is change so that you will see on the front end there is an issue of uh, there will be a, a bad request and a message explaining that and also log. And that is also the new setting uh, that is set so that we use uh, this field, the full text, that usually contains now the the title and the body of any content item. And this is a field that we can configure from the configuration settings. And if we go to, well, for the type, type setting, so if we go to a type, let's say article, you can say what should be used to look for articles. Okay? For instance, by default, we include the display text and the body parts. But you could say, I also want to use some more data, like some things that are in some fields or some static text. Um, and this is using liquid. So this is how you can customize this indexed field and um, and then the search will use that. So that's how it works to render 
the search. Explore, and I just have one content item. Okay, and there is a big issue with the tabs. Explore, but there is also about. You see, and now I have the about page. So some improvements could be first to change the theme here to support this page correctly and also maybe we should define a custom, uh, maybe it's already done, a custom shape for the search results, for the list and for each item, um, like search results summary and search results. Um, so it, they look like consistent. Here we are just calling, I assume, the summary for each content item. Maybe you should have a custom one to make it look better. And paging is supported. Okay, so that's how it works. Uh, yeah, Jasper. And the PR that Jasper has, which isn't merged yet, adds the support to configure what content types are part in the index and what versions are part of in, in each index. And that will be also useful for that. Um, yeah. And other things that are not related for this search page. But this exists everywhere. And many people have asked that last week, so now I, I made it official. Well, until we have some doc about it. Um, questions about all these things? Nothing. Uh, topics. Topics are triggered by Antoine, and please add more if I forgot some of them. Um, docs, there has been some question, I think, from Jean-Philippe. Antoine reminded me about that. Um, communication. So, docs, the question was, should we use a different web, a different GitHub repo for the documentation? And I say again because we already had this discussion, and if we need to change, it's because some some variables about this decision have changed, and some have changed. So I, from what I remember, um, and I have a very bad memory, from what I remember when we talked about docs, when we started the project, is that we wanted it in the same repo so that it would be easier to write documentation. We, in Orchard 1, we have a different repo for documentation. And in the end, nobody writes documentation because nobody knows where it is or we don't do trash correctly or it's just a, a side project. Having the docs inside the same repo has helped us, as expected, to get people into writing um, documentation when they write their modules. Okay. So for instance, when Dean writes a new module, well, he can just add a readme and or update one to add some documentation about it without having to create another clone, another PR, and the PR that depends on the PR in the first repository, and then that's an issue. Uh, and it's and and Having separate repositories is always usually an issue. Like I, I, we have that also in the SPI team with the .NET Core team. The .NET Core team, like let's say, has two main repositories: the Core FX, the framework, and the runtime, Core CLR. And when you do, you do a change in the Core FX, you need then to create a PR in Core CLR uh, repo to update the Core CLR repo with the framework. Oh, and then we need to create a PR in SPI Core to update the, the, the runtime from ASP.NET Core because they are in many different repos, okay? And that, I'm afraid that having a different um, repo will mean, well, we'll start writing a PR on the doc repo once the PR on the feature itself is done. And maybe we'll have to do many changes in the docs and then many changes in the, in the, in the main repo to, to be able to update. So that's my concern with that. At the same time, there are things that are harder to make because we have the, the docs in the same repository. For instance, um, docs that are technical per module are easy to make in the same readme. But stuff that is cross-module, 
we don't really know where to put them, like guides. So we have a guides thing, but it's not really, it's not as easy to make as the technical documentation because the organization is different and we might not know where, where it is. So that, that might be uh, something else to, to look at. So that's my arguments in favor of having the docs in the same repository. Then I'd like to know why I I don't know where it was talked about first, why it would be better to have a different doc system. So one advantage would be that it would be easier to create and maintain localized versions of a docs repo. Okay. Um, probably. <laughs> because, for example, I made a, a test, I created Orchard uh, core dot fr and I made it uh, a sub uh, I mean a subs uh, I configured in read the docs to make it the French version of the docs mm -hmm. but I only localized uh, the the readme the first index uh, the home page um, but it is a uh, very hard to, to maintain uh, because there is the, also the, the source code. Uh, yes. Mm. Yes, I understand. And no, Jasmine, we are not talking about moving to, to DocFX. No, read the doc is fine. And DocFX, I think, is different. Let's see, now see, I can imagine where it will be. <laughs> Is that related to the discussion? Oh, who are you talking to? Oh, yeah, no, you're talking about search. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, all pros and cons. Uh, at the same time, you are writing some French docs. I don't see many people trying to localize the documentation. Look at option one. We have a different repository. How many local locals we have? Okay, but imagine some Chinese guys want to to create a Chinese version of the docs. Mm -hmm. I I get it, uh, but my concern is that I can't <coughs> imagine that, mm -hmm. but I've never seen it. Okay, so it we could try. The issue is that we need to be confident that it will help. People do that, and they will do that. Today, we have the translations. How many translations do we have? Not that many. We have lots of. We have some Chinese. Okay. Uh, we have the French one because you are doing that. Uh, but there are not many uh, contributors, and it's not because it's not easy. It's super easy to provide translations. So last week we got Japanese and Greek improvements. Mm -hmm. So that's good. So that's kind of a point for you, be saying people contribute if it's easy to contribute. But the documentation, it's so much work and it changes so much. I'm not sure it would be the time to, to do that, at least when it's stable maybe. Or could we have a system where, where we c like you did, like a different repo, but just for French, just for one for Chinese, one for French, one for whatever, and then people contribute there, because it might not be also one to one, like just translating. The, uh, it might be in some cases, but in some other cases, it might want different guides or go to a different speed. Maybe someone speaking Chinese will write lots of documentation. Uh, and we will. It will be better in Chinese and in English. So, what do the other projects do? Do they have like all these translations? Let's. So, if we if I take Craft CMS, which is super popular, okay, we all know that because we we took ideas from that. If I look at the documentation, they have documentation. I know that. language, Chinese, I assume. So here, Japanese, actually. So they have this. 
and it looks like it's a mapping from their main documentation in English. Yep. Two one one. Yeah, it's one to one. But they have Japanese. They have one language. How do you oh and you did the docs with there is a link to the GitHub repository, so let's look. Edit this page on GitHub. Language, edit this page on GitHub. And they have cross CMS slash docs, which is a different repo. V3 requirements. Lots of commits. So where all Japanese is a different folder. Okay, that's how they do that. WordPress too big. So, who else has an opinion? I want more than two opinions. Doesn't count otherwise. So, sh so, so we have. So there is docs. So docs again. Docs. Can we also talk about samples? Code samples. Yeah. Discussion, but as part of this thing, okay. Discussion about um, having a different repo for docs. Okay, and one repo for languages. Did you want one repo for all languages or uh, no one repo per language? Yeah. What's better? Because Craft has that. Okay, one repo per language. There is one thing I can see: um, the fact that we have the documentation directly in the Archer Core repository. It's easier to find um, examples. Maybe we could have both. Find examples because you search in the source code. <laughs> you should search on the Archer. On, I, I usually you open read the docs and there is a search and that's how I find it. I don't even try to look in the solution. My my only the only point I see with uh, one repo okay single repo is that easier to contribute while making features. Uh, if you're using Visual Studio Code you can also uh, see the markup Markdown. Yeah, but yeah. you can also do that with another repo. A repo is a multiple repo, um, easier to translate, but translate. I mean, we could still translate. Okay, it's not about actually repo or not repo. It's about the organization, because we could have a docs folder in our repo and. With a single with a single repo, we could have a docs slash uh, culture folder, and that would be the same. Slash module. 
so that was yeah. So that was my comment. Is that today, I assume it's hard to translate because it's everywhere. It's in every module, and it was that for for a reason. And that and also when you navigate in GitHub, you go in the module folder and you have the README directly. So maybe we should not use the README as the doc, but or we should keep the README because it's a README. So maybe it's uh, keep the README for each module as a README. Okay. And maybe we should have a docs folder organized as documentation because the, the organization is completely different and we can mix stuff around. Today we have the liquid in the liquid module and sometimes in the other modules we talk about the liquid thing. Uh, but it's more yeah, it's more like reference documentation than end user documentation. So uh, um, a, um, what's the word? Uh, what's the compromise in English? A compromise. Oh, compromise. <laughs> Would be to uh, to maybe have a folder like this where we reorganize the documentation from read the docs inside a folder and cultures there so that people know that they can create the French or whatever language documentation they want that will match the structure of the thing and and the structure with samples with guides with um, topics FAQs whatever maybe that would be better so on to it has to be, it has to be another uh, repo uh, right. Why? I cannot configure RTD with, with the docs to say uh, uh, go and fetch uh, the this culture in this folder. It and has to be another repo. Why does it have to be another repo? That's how you configure. You specify. Uh, no. You you say it's, you you configure read the docs with a repo. Yeah. A so sub. why does it have to be a repo without code inside? Today it works. Today you configure on read the docs, and it's taking our repo, and there is an MD file inside, and it finds it, and it just doesn't look at the rest. Yes, but you cannot split by culture in in one re, one repo. Uh, you cannot say uh, the French culture is in a subfolder. You can't say that. It has to be. Okay, no. so you say you want different repos because of the cultures. Yeah. So the the thing that CraftCMS does, you think it's a custom thing? It's crowding that that works for like that, or? That's weird that you can't do that with read docs. That you can't say. Well, at, at the same time, so Orchard, so read the docs. Yeah. Read the. Oh. Even oh, even on the, that's why even on Google we find latest. We need to remove that. Can we remove this thing latest? It's, it's wrong. So today we have the slash English slash dev, and here if we go to how do we change the language? Can't. Not anymore, maybe. Yeah, maybe because there is another language. Mm -hmm. We support a project with translations into multiple languages. For example, a project that is Spanish will have a default URL. Okay. You must commit the PO files for read the docs to translate the documentation. Yeah, that's another way to do it, but it's really hard to maintain. Okay, no, I just wanted to know if it was if you had to do it or if it was a way to do that. Okay, so that we don't have to do it. Good. Um, yeah. Okay, I think we need to be sure that we can't have this because if you. 
just want different repository because we want because read the docs doesn't support that, that's weird. I all about simplifying for creating translations, but I'm also for being able to write documentation easily in a different language. Because without that we won't have documentation. Look at Orchard One. Nobody ever wrote any documentation for Orchard One if it wasn't from the core team. And in Orchard Core, we had more than Orchard One in terms of contributions. Okay. Let's see if we can really not do that. Because I learned also from Script and Dean that it was easier to write documentation because it was in the same repository. I'm okay to reorganize the docs folder, and we'll have a single repo. That's fine, and it won't go through PRs because I mean through CI because that's already how we configured it. That's nice, uh, and if we can have the different cultures inside, that's good. I want to see. And I'm, I don't want to get out of read the docs because it works super well. It's already configured. So let's see if we can do it without different repository for each culture. Testing. Um, you mentioned also you want to talk about samples. As part of the repository, of the, as part of the documentation, or as part of something else? Yes. And for example, last week uh, someone contributed to Orchard Core that samples. Yeah, uh, Jeremy the, Cook. Yeah. The, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that is one thing, and the other one is uh, uh, by that uh, Jean Philippe was talking about. Uh, could, would it be possible to have something similar to docs.microsoft.com/samples? Yeah. So. There is a thing, you know, um, what's his name, Dodigy? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can you one spell is Elias, I'm not sure it's, yeah, Dodigy, this one. So he, he, he's very famous because he's got a repository with all the samples for SPDNet, SPDNet core, and also orchard ones. Okay. So that might be a way, there might be a way to contribute here. To samples here, they can be small samples, applications, small files, and everything. And he's maintaining them; he's ensure that it's still working. So we have the Orchard Core samples, but if on small sample, a site with sample, it will be that we can't provide samples on the Microsoft site because it's a Microsoft site, and um, we could it could be part of our local uh, our sorry localization documentation. We could have maybe a section in docs so that we have se organized sample with a defined formalism because the samples that you mentioned in Microsoft site is each sample is a one page explaining what it does and a code sample you can copy paste. It's not a project sample like Orchard Core samples. So if it's just samples with pieces of code, it should be part of the documentation so we can search for it and they are organized and they have a very specific template for writing code samples. The same way we'll have guides that are very specific formalism, and um, and and if you look at Cross CMS, I think they have that also. Um, configuration, core concepts, field types, and they have something called guides. But not there. Interesting. You see, they have guides, and it's not part of the documentation. I don't understand why. It's a different way to displaying. Okay. But in the end, it's the same thing as what we have for guides. So it could be part of the documentation. So yes, the samples I think should be part of the documentation. I don't think we should have a different site for that. We just need to, if you want samples, to provide, but to be micro samples and not 
application samples. FAQ suggested also. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so what we are suggesting here is to have a different ER key for the docs. So we don't use README anymore. We write the docs with different pages and organize the table of content and um, and this way there is one place for documentation. Maybe we are uh, mature enough in terms of coding that we can move everything to a single folder. Um, and it might be easier to organize what we want to say with sections instead of having them organized by module. And they individually make sense, but they don't make sense as a whole. People don't know where to start. Do I click on liquid? Do I click on shapes? Do I click on templates? And maybe the templates is actually the templates module, which is nothing to do with how to write a template. Uh, the themes section doesn't have doesn't explain how to write a theme. So that's not the, the issue today. We got some technical value from that, from the readme's, but we don't have any good uh, pathway to documenting something, to, uh, to learning something. Uh, the example was yesterday I was trying to, to follow the, the stream of a guy who said he will, he will do a website with Oracle Core. And the stream was like, okay, let's go on the website. Let's look at the documentation. And he stopped. He's like, well, I don't know what to do. How do I build a site with Rotary Core? And I totally get it. So my my first reaction was like, why don't we have a guide that says how to build a website with Rotary Core? Even any site, a site. Let's take a site and let's build it. I did a video last year, but we don't have anything written. Like, how do we write the blog site from scratch? Even if it's not decoupled CMS, like full CMS click on start blank site or start CMS site, then create a blog post content type, then click there, then create this file to render a blog post and you can see piece by piece how you build that. And then people will learn and they just follow the, the same thing but for their site. Because if they see how we can create a, a menu in the blog module, then they can create a menu in their own site. If they see how we copy paste a template from a template site, the, like the start bootstrap, then they will do the same thing with their own template, and then so on and so forth. So the video we made last year was super useful, I think, but we need uh, that in the documentation. Uh, so that people can know, like, there should be a guide that says creating a blog with Orchard Core, or creating a, a blank site or a custom site with Orchard Core, and so on. And, and this way, What is that? Is that an actual link? Or folder? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yes, creating a, and you see it's really Orchard Core framework oriented, creating an Orchard Core CMS website. Yes, and then, yeah, that's what he said, yeah, I could create a blog, and then, but I won't create my own site. How do I start to create my own site? So this is nice mm -hmm. as a demo, and, and try Orchard yes. project will be very nice because you can see what it does, but now you want to create your own site, so we need, creating a new website or I don't know creating a custom website and not an existing template we have okay that, that's that's what I think should be the first thing we should have somewhere that's a lot of people because when you look at that you're like okay CMS modules and yeah let's click on themes but I doesn't tell you what where you should start from there is no when I say pathway there is no direction from A to Z, from 1 to 10 to, to build a website. It's just an aggregate of inform different readme files that are that all make sense and are, vi they are valuable information. And maybe from our um, nicer talk, we could point to the title documentation because it will explain all the view properties. Or when we say, oh, by the way, just click, just type through the title part, and we know that because if you look at this page, this is where we found that. Okay, or you can find more properties there. Or let's create a query like this. Oh, and by the way, if you want to learn more about queries, this is the page you should look at because it will tell you how the queries module work. Okay, but but we need something that guides people. They don't have to s 
well, they don't even know what to search for. They would just pick random stuff and like, well, okay, what is that? Oh, no, it does that. You know, but it really something that, that is guiding people. They don't have to think about that. They can they can read through it in order. That's why I, I think we should have first. Even a simple one, like let's rebuild the, the blog um, site with a tutorial, with a guide. And this way people will be able to get into the system and build a site. Um, Then communication blog posts website. Um, we have no communication, no communication so far for RC1, and um, nothing has started with the Microsoft blog. So I will write a blog post for them to publish it if they validate it, and I assume it will be released um, around the RTM. At the same time, we don't have a blog on our site. Or any documentation on, on any communication on website. So I think that will be the first thing to do: move our site to Orchard Core. and create a blog at least so that we can, like we have in Orchard One, um, aggregate the blog posts from anyone who writes something and or communicate on the blog post, we can point to things directly. We can link to it, links to somewhere, because that's better. Um, so that's my suggestion for, more for better communication, at least to have a medium where we can communicate. Today we have nothing. Well, we have a static site for the front end, but we need something more dynamic. Yeah, at least we can write blog posts on that and maybe, well, and links to documentation when something and people could register to that or follow that and that would be interesting. Um, good. Anyone has any comments? Suggestion? Requests? We already have the Orchard blog site. There's a collection of uh, Orchard blogs. Where? Oh, yeah. So we, yes. Yeah, so the only one who communicates is Gabor <laughs> by doing his updates. Blog dot com. Is that? No. Or chat blog dot dot net dot com. I pasted the URL. That's better. That's what I type. Dude, that's what I type, but I assume that I type this way. No, that works too. You type .NET instead of .NET. Ah, muscle memory. Yeah, so we have a this week. And you can see that the script or chat blocks. So that's the collection of the blocks. Mm -hmm. Well, you should have one more, which is the Orchard Core blog, but we don't have one. That's cool, and we need, but we still need official communication. But that's pretty full. Is it done with Orchard? You're lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these pros, they even have a static domain. Oh my god, they are so good. So fast. Oh, it could be faster if it was with a, with a short call. It should migrate. Oh, that's sad that the theme is not the same as the front end one. I like it. I like this one. It looks nice. Cool. Thank you. Anything else? Simple. Certainly a plus. I'm working. Yeah, but not everyone wants to understand the source code. They just want to build a website. And that makes sense. They just want to know what to type and where. And it will also help us write websites because we don't want to look at the source code all the time. At least if it's in the documentation side, that's fine. And if they want to learn, they want to learn. They don't learn by looking at the source code, most of them. Don't have time to that. They will build their own CMS. <laughs> so, yeah. But that's, that's okay. We have still work to do and things that can 
easily be fixed. Um, okay. And for the discussion, Antoine, we can continue discussion offline. You can share your ideas. I think we should start to see if we can do that. At least that will be a first step, I think, to uh, middle ground to have better documentation to allow for translations. Um, that's the first step. And and if we have to go to the repo, which I don't want to personally, then we will see. Um, yeah, three actions. Look at that if we can do that technically on reader docs. Um, create a blog on our site and migrate our site to an Orchard Core site and write the first, uh, write a guide to construct a website. Okay, I will work on constructing a website and I hope Antoine you can look at if we can support with read the docs the slash yen slash fr. Mm, no, we cannot. Ah. Yeah. No way you can fix that. Well, I'm sure we can define because I, w I, have, I have an ID. I have an ID. Okay. You will see. If read the docs allows us to enter different repository for each language, well, enter different repository with the same string just changing the slash yen to a slash fr. It will clone it three times with different folders, and that will work. Got you. No. OK, we'll see. <laughs> well, that's, the, that's just pure logic. If you can point to different GitHub with folders, you can give them the same GitHub every time. It won't matter with different folders. I'm sure that will work like this. I'm sure there is a way to do that. No, because it should be the same mkdocs.yml. No, we can have two YML because they will have different strings for the titles. So there, are, there will be the English YML and the... But that the, that's the default uh, config file for... Uh, I don't trust you. If there is an English repository and a French repository, they will have different index files. I don't. If it's different folders, it's the same as different repository in terms of configuration. Sure. They must have thought about it. They can't force people to have different repos for different languages. I will check. Thank you. Comments? Sites? Does anyone, did anyone publish some site? Antoine showed me one. <laughs> I am in my site some RC1, yes. Good. It's faster? Mm, yes. So, yes. You, so you pay less? <laughs> no, because I, oh. I have a dedicated server. Wow. Not on Azure, I, I, I remember. <laughs> um, okay, good. Thanks, everyone. Oh. Thanks, everyone. Uh, see you on Thursday or next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.